my talk tonight is Longevity is Light, Illuminating the Pathway to Anti-Aging and Pain-Free Living, okay? When light, certain frequency of light enters your eyes in the morning, it stimulates your suprachiasmic nucleus, which is basically your circadian rhythm, and that's your biological clock. When certain frequency of light enters your eyes, um, some of the light activates your pineal gland or pineal gland to release melatonin, and that helps you what? Sleep. Who has insomnia or sleeping problems? You need more light in your eyes, uh, preferably at the break of dawn when it's orange, about 20 minutes a day. You don't have to look into the sun, just be outside, okay? Um, by the way, the pineal gland does release growth hormone, so you could possibly release the growth hormone releasing peptides with certain frequencies of light, all right? Um, we can actually program the four brain waves through different flickering light uh, frequencies to reprogram the four brain waves, alpha, beta, data, and theta. And we could monitor that through neurofeedback training. Um, so if you have diseases like a slow functioning brain caused by um, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, we could actually ramp up the brain waves, maybe perhaps stimulate the substantia Niagara Pars Impacta to produce dopamine. Yeah. Um, the main light modalities we use is the handheld laser. That's a class four 250 watt super pulse laser from Italy. It's the world's most powerful laser. It penetrates up to seven centimeters for joint, uh, skin, um, and nerve regeneration. Uh, we also use uh, light emitting diodes, red light, with multiple wavelengths, uh, 630, 655, 660 for hair growth, 630 anti-inflammation, 980 uh, pain reduction, and 1064 for regeneration of tissue and activation of your endogenous stem cells. Um, Here's how the class four laser works. Let's see the video um, through what's called photobiomodulation, which um, charges your, your stem cells battery called the cytochrome C process complex in your mitochondria, more nitric oxide production and stem cell proliferation. So. Laser therapy uses a process called photobiomodulation to change the condition of damaged tissue by stimulating cellular metabolism thereby accelerating the healing process. A large convex treatment head can be used to compress superficial tissues, displacing excess fluid, and enhancing laser penetration to deep structures. As light pours into the tissue, photons will be scattered, reflected, and absorbed. Lasers operating in the near-infrared spectrum from 650 to 1300 nanometers can penetrate to deep tissue structures. Light that penetrates into the tissue can be absorbed by melanin, hemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin, and water. Energy from these absorption events will be dissipated as heat, generating a soothing warmth in the tissue. The primary target for photobiomodulation is the cytochrome C complex, which is found in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Cytochrome C is a vital component of the electron transport chain that drives cellular metabolism. As light is absorbed, cytochrome C is stimulated, leading to increased production of ATP, the molecule that facilitates energy transfer within the cell. So the bottom line is, um, as you get older, your endogenous stem cell count goes down. Well, the health of the stem cell depends on the vibrancy, the potency of the mitochondria, so we can, in effect, charge the mitochondria with the negative electrons with the, the photobiomodulation. Um, we can also stimulate your body's endogenous stem cells with a special device uh, called the light uh, stem. Um, what we do, we take 100 cc's of blood from your arm, we sp sp spin it twice like PRP, um, we will put the uh, syringe into the device and it will photobiomodulate your blood 
which activates these dormant, uh, very small embryonic-like stem cells. These are remnants of stem cells when you were a fetus in your mother's womb. They actually circulate in your peripheral blood and bone marrow blood, but they're in a quiescent state. They're dormant. So with certain frequencies of light, we're doing research to wake up these, your own embryonic stem cells, which are more potent, they're more primitive, which means they're totipotent. They could differentiate into every tissue without causing teratomas or cancer, because it's your very own, okay? Here's how the machine works. Very small embryonic light stem cell uh, pulse generator. And we're gonna white label the laser nerve frames here. We put the uh, 10 or 20 cc's of PRP or the Wharton's jelly or exosomes to activate those cells. So this is laser stimulated stem cell therapy. So we'll take the laser activated blood. Um, if you have a systemic disorder, um, autoimmune, um, it could even be a metabolic disorder like thyroid type 2 diabetes. We can IV your own blood, and then we use another laser to signal those cells to go to the body part we want, such as if you want increased ejection fraction. I'll show you that study. Um, these are all the human cell tissue products available on the market. Um, I just talked about PRP. The problem is pure PRP has a lot of uh, growth factors and platelets. It's great for wound healing. It does have a short-term regenerative effect. It doesn't last because the V cells are in dormant state. Um, you can heat your PRP called Regenekine. That's what Kobe Bryant had in Germany to release more growth factors. Um, you can put the, you can freeze the PRP and put it in a hypoxic state, which releases its growth factors. But we find the, the, the laser stimulated uh, blood V cell treatment is more effective because it saturates the, all the blood to wake up more your, your stem cells. Um, cord blood, um, that's good for uh, hematopoietic stem cell regeneration for angiogenesis if you need more red blood cells, white blood cells. It's good to immunomodulate autoimmune disorders. Um, it's good for uh, leukemia, blood cancers. Um, Wharton's jelly uh, is the ideal tissue from the umbilical cord. It's like a cushion for like degenerated joint diseases. You're, you're, you do not want to IV uh, Wharton's jelly. It's pretty thick. You don't want to risk a, a clot or a thrombus, all right? Then we have bone marrow, which is the first FDA approved stem cell therapy in the U.S. Uh, bone marrow derived stem cells for leukemia, uh, blood cancer. Um, bone marrow is a poor source for orthopedics just because there's not a lot of mesenchymal cartilage soft tissue forming stem cells, but it is excellent for immune disorders because that's where your white blood cells and red blood cells are produced. And then we have uh, uh, fat derived stem cells called stromal vascular fraction. Uh, the problem is if you're over 30, the older you get, the less regenerative your fat stem cells are. So um, if you do fat stem cells, it works better if you're under 30, okay? So that's what's available on the market. Oh, and then there are what's called um, extracellular vesicle therapy, nanotherapy, uh, called exosomes. Um, at the end of the day, uh, exosomes are released by the stem cells and they carry messenger RNA to the damaged tissue and exosomes have the instructions or the healing signals to tell the tissue to repair, okay? So I like to think of the stem cells like the post office. It's pretty big, but it's not gonna fit like, it can't pass the blood-brain barrier. It's very large. So we just take trillions of exosomes and the more because they're only 50 nanometers, they could pass a blood-brain barrier. So it has more systemic effects than the whole stem cell, okay? Um, this is some of the research that we're doing with the regenerative labs. Um, Dr. Parita, orthopedic surgeon, he talked, he's part of this study. So the, the scanning electron microscope on the right, the dark image, that's what Wharton's jelly and bone cord tissue looks under microscope. You see this collagenous strands, uh, very similar type 2 collagenous fibers. 
Um, the image on the left with the arrows, that is, that's a torn cartilage in, in a knee. The cartilage becomes very stretched and torn, they become very thin. These are type two collagenous fibers. So the argument is when we inject the Wharton's jelly, because it's homologous tissue, that way it repairs. That's what the FDA wants. They want, homo it has to be homologous use. The structure and function of the tissue has to match the structure and function of the donor. Um, no systemic effect. We're not gonna IV Wharton's jelly. It's gonna affect one joint. And uh, minimally, minimally manipulated, you can't mix a drug. You could dilute it with uh, sodium bicarbonate or saline, but no drugs added. And it has to be in its pure form, okay? So it's called 361 FDA guidelines, and that's what we're operating under. Uh, we just can't make any claims it does anything, okay? All right. Here's some example of some of our uh, uh, proof of concept, observational clinical studies. Um, this is a, a patient with his L5-S1 disc has stage four degeneration. In layman's terms, it's bone on bone. Uh, normally, a patient with this would need a, a titanium fusion. Uh, instead, we injected the Wharton's jelly with several rounds of laser stimulation. You could see the after extra, you see how the spine opened up? So the disc base has been regenerated. I think it's because we strengthened the multifidus muscle, which is your posture muscles. And now the uh, recurrent meningeal nerve that causes back pain, he has no back pain and no more sciatica, okay? Uh, there was a study done on a group of rats. Um, they divided it into two groups. So let's say you guys are the rats and there's 21 on this side of the room, you're the control, and 21 on this side. Uh, the 21 rats who had the control study, they had a, a sham laser, it was fake, it did nothing. The rats on this side, they had the real laser, okay? And the results of the study, they were able to regenerate chondrocytes in the rat's knees. So the laser somehow stimulated the rat's own stem cells to come out of the bone marrow and regenerate the cartilage tissue. So it makes sense if it happens in a rat, it can happen in a human. So we started doing our own trials. I just don't have you know, $10 million and 15, 15 years of research to do it, right? Um, so we, we monitor your progress through inflammation. So we'll scan your joints with the infrared thermography. Um, People think red is hotter. No, white is hot. If you burn coals like you can barbecue, it becomes hot. It becomes white hot. Think of it that. So the image on the right is uh, this gentleman had knee arthritis, inflammation in his legs. After the Wharton's jelly injection laser treatment, you see his legs are red. Nor it's normal skin temperature, 98.6, and he has no knee pain, and he avoided the knee, the knee replacement. Um, so we do use uh, the 250-watt Superpulse cold laser from Italy because it penetrates deeper and doesn't burn you because it's cold, and it's Superpulse, so the photonic energy doesn't accumulate longer, all right? Um, this is an 88-year-old uh, patient with pretty much bone-on-bone, -bone, late-stage osteoarthritis of her lateral knee. She had knock knee. You can see the after x-ray, the increase of joint space, after the Wharton's jet jelly injection and several rounds of our laser treatments, okay? And she was scheduled for bilateral knee replacements, could not go up and down the stairs. See, it doesn't matter how old you are. She was 88. The birth tissue derived stem cells, they're day zero old. They're programmed to repair. You just have to stimulate it with the laser so they keep repairing and growing, okay? Um, I like to think of stem cells, they're like firemen. They home in on the inflammation. So that's why we check the inflammation in your body, and that makes us decide where we're gonna inject the firemen, the stem cells, okay? Uh, this is an interesting study. So because of the second law of thermodynamics, if you put stem cells in a flask, they're gonna go all over the place. Things get in disorder, okay? but. If you put a certain wavelength of laser through the flask, where, where are the stem cells attracted to? The light, right? Um, all I could explain this phenomenon is if you put uh, a plant on a windowsill, where are the plants gonna go? They grow towards the sun, right? 
It's called uh, tropism. They want that ATP energy. So we could manipulate the cells where to go with certain frequencies of laser, okay? Um, there was a study where they IV'd some, um, some stem cells and they lasered through the chest and then they were able to increase ejection fraction, which is basically uh, for heart failure when the blood's not pumping enough. Um, here's tropism right here, okay? So here's how exosomes work. Um, again, the stem cell is the big round circle, upper right corner. The small vesicles are the small exosomes that deliver the healing mRNA signaling messages to the target tissue that's damaged. Um, there are many athletes who have regenerative medicine that extend their careers. Even Jack Nicholas, when he was 80, couldn't stand up. He flew to Germany, had stem cells from Dr. Alt. He came back, and now he's golfing and walking again, okay? Um, so there is really no uh, joint, nerve, or soft tissue that the birth tissue products cannot regenerate. You're not going to be 10 years old, but, you know, we try to get back seniors and baby boomers back to tissues they love, pickleball, golf, whatever. <laughs>